Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I'm going to be doing a Blu-ray and DVD update for September 2016. Uh, so we have a very small stack of Blu-rays, a whole load of DVD box sets, and a whole load of movies on DVD as well. Uh, so let's quickly go through the Blu-rays. So first up we have the complete first season of Mr. Robot, uh, which I began streaming this show using Amazon Prime. I got about four or five episodes in, and then bit the bullet and bought the Blu-ray, and I'm very glad that I did, uh, because visually this has got to be one of the best Blu-rays I've ever watched. Just absolutely amazing quality. Uh, really crisp, obviously 1080p, just perfect overall. And I would definitely recommend grabbing the Blu-ray. The show itself, I would definitely recommend too, um, following a computer hacker known as Elliot, who is recruited by the enigmatic, uh, mysterious man known as Mr. Robot, who has a whole uh, crew of hackers that he's recruited over the years. And uh, under the name F Society, they pull off an amazing hack on a company called E Corp or Evil Corp, and uh, completely wipe their finances. So overall, season one is fantastic, and I'm currently working my way through season two, which recently finished, um, but the episodes are all up on Amazon Prime as well. So that's Mr. Robot season one, definitely recommend it. Uh, next up we have uh, Disney Pixar's Inside Out, got to be one of the best Pixar films I've watched in the past decade. Um, just overall, absolutely fantastic, really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I love how they literally just personify emotions now, it's just hilariously ironic, and the film itself is fantastic, with so many uh, great jokes and gags, and the bonus this film in itself was great too. Um, Riley's first day, which is quite funny, so definitely pick this up on Blu-ray, would recommend. And uh, something that I probably wouldn't recommend really, the uh, movie itself is good. This is Battlestar Galactica, The Plan, uh, directed by Edward James Olmos, who portrays um, Admiral Adama throughout the series, but um, they made this movie from the perspective of the Cylons during the first couple of seasons of Battlestar, and even though it is really well structured, and I was kind of disappointed with it the first time I watched it, but re-watching it, I do appreciate it that little bit more. Um, but the Steelbook is such a substandard release with the um, 15 rating literally printed on the front and on the back. No inside artwork. Um, so the only good thing about this really is the variation with the cover with the cool Cylon artwork. But that's pretty much it. Uh, so quite a disappointing release, honestly. But I've um, finally finished off all the Battlestar Galactica stuff. So I'm very much um, happy I've done that. Uh, so let's move on to the DVDs. So, first up for the DVDs, we have Season 2 of The Cleveland Show, which I was quite reluctant about buying, but I gave it the benefit of a doubt anyway, uh, just because I rewatched Season 1 quite a while ago just to review it, and to my surprise, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so I was curious as to where the decline in quality began with Season 2, as I remember this being quite awful, and I can safely say Season 2, Episode 1 was just dreadful, and uh, all the way through there was just so many bad jokes, really bad delivery, and the dialogue was just something that really made me cringe every time. I watched an episode, so I really did not like the season. Uh, episodes such as Singing Bogies and Cleveland Jr. and Rollo eating them, and then episodes that are trying to be creative, uh, like Cleveland Live, for example, which obviously was supposed to be spoofing a live show. Uh, just really bad delivery of jokes and just unfunny in every way. Uh, but at a push, about six episodes on this season overall were funny, but um, the rest of it was just really garbage. So I really did not enjoy this, and I will not be grabbing three or season four. So yeah, that's quite a shame really. So that's season two of The Cleveland Show. Uh, next up we have series six of the BBC comedy Not Going Out starring Lee Mack, uh, which I have one to five in a little collective box set, but um, I was I just didn't really want to pursue the show anymore because Tim Vine, quite a crucial actor slash character, uh, left the show after season five and they lazily wrote him out in the first episode uh, within the first five minutes saying that the character had gone over to work in Germany. Um, but actually, to my surprise, every episode made me laugh. This season has got to be my new favourite of the show, which is really surprising. Uh, nine episodes overall, including a Christmas special, and um, overall this was fantastic. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. The first episode was my favourite, titled Rabbit, uh, which is a really morbid episode where the character Lucy accidentally kills uh, one of her clients' rabbits when she's working uh, for an office agency, so that's quite funny. And uh, overall the season was fantastic, so I really thoroughly enjoyed not going out series six. Next up we have Season 3, Set 1, as it's stated, of Monster Quest, uh, which I spoke about this show in a couple of updates, and uh, honestly, it's only funny to me, really. It's just a really badly done documentary series by the History Channel where they're trying to discover uh, fictional mythical creatures like the Loch Ness Monster, uh, the Chupacabra, for example, and uh, Loch Ness, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie, is actually on this box set, um, where they actually go ahead and look for the corpse of Nessie, and uh, the camera crew get incredibly excited when they see a little 
little beaver uh, pushing a block of wood on the surface thinking that's like the head of a monster or something just utterly ludicrous and uh, it's so addictive but so funny so that's set three uh, season three rather set one of uh, Monster Quest season three uh, the set two is actually included with the season four box set to um, clear up any confusion but that's Monster Quest season three anyway uh, next up we have a sketch show from the 90s and that is We Know Where You Live, the remix edition. Uh, this is the complete series as it states, but it's just seven of the 13 episodes. Or at least seven episodes made up of the 13 episodes um, that originally aired on Channel 5 many years ago. So it's just a little compilation of uh, random comedy shorts starring Simon Pegg and a few other actors. But this was quite funny. Uh, very dark comedy. Some of it is hit and miss. Uh, but the vast majority I really thoroughly enjoyed. So if you can find this, definitely check it out. Uh, next up we have Volume 1 of Happy Tree Friends called First Blood, uh, which I'm sure many people have heard of this little cartoon series with these adorable little critters uh, that morbidly kill themselves, which is funny in some ways and absolutely awful in some others. But this is 14 episodes, and uh, I actually found the majority of them quite funny. You can watch most of these online, uh, but I saw this for 25p, I think, so I just grabbed it for the sake of it. But yeah, Happy Tree Friends Volume 1, quite funny, so that's that. Uh, next up we have a couple of movies that I haven't watched yet. We have Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. I uh, got this for 50p at CEX and I wasn't really too fussed about it um, when it first came out but I wanted to re-watch the original three Pirates of the Caribbean films and I still never watched this one. Uh, so I thought buying this would encourage me to watch the rest of them uh, since I haven't seen them in about four years maybe. So uh, that's uh, the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And uh, Next up we have Braveheart which I watched ages and ages ago and I barely remember it. Um, so I wanted to revisit this movie. It's about three hours in length, which is kind of what's putting me off re-watching it, um, but I'm very much looking forward to do so. So that's um, Braveheart starring Mel Gibson, phenomenal film from what I remember. Uh, next up we have The Graduate starring Dustin Hoffman and Anne Bancroft, uh, which I never had seen this film before, and I loved it. It was just really funny, quite scandalous in some areas, which is what made it really funny. And uh, the cringe comedy in this is fantastic, and uh, overall has quite a cool iconic ending. And uh, this edition comes with a little booklet about the film, and it uh, was very enjoyable. So that is The Graduate. Next up we have Office Space from the creator of Beavers and Butthead, Mike Judge. A hilarious comedy. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I did. Um, but some great iconic scenes are featured in this film. I love this little guy with the stapler which I really felt sorry for by the end. But luckily he got his revenge. If you've seen the film you'll know what I'm discussing. But um, the film itself is phenomenal with so many great iconic scenes such as uh, the destruction of the printer to the um, Die Motherfucker rap song. Uh, which, was, which actually inspired the sequence in Family Guy, which many people will probably remember a little bit more, uh, where Stewie and Brian are destroying these surfing bird records. So, yeah, this film has inspired things. It's overall fantastic comedy, and I love films set in offices. Um, so this one is definitely one that I shall be keeping in the collection for a good while. Um, so that's Office Space. Uh, next up, we have a Liam Neeson film, and that is Run All Night, starring Ed Harris as well, uh, which I didn't really enjoy this film, to be honest. I mean, it was okay, but once again, Liam Neeson portrays the same kind of character that he does in every single movie there was no difference to him in this film it was just pitiful really Ed Harris didn't even save this film which I was kind of hoping he would and um, ugh, there was just not really much to this film anyway so um, that's Run All Night, quite disappointing I expected a little bit more from this uh, next up we have Iv, starring Malcolm McDowell, a phenomenal film. I really enjoyed this. A uh, great film set in an all-boys school where um, some lads discover some guns under the school and have a mass shootout at the end, which is great. Just a really great violent film and I really loved it, so that's Iv. Next up we have a Spanish film and that is Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, this film is absolutely phenomenal. Spanish dialogue with English subtitles set in the Second World War uh, following the little girl Ophelia who is quite literally not from this world and does not belong as told by this fawn character who is part of all the mythical characters that she meets along the way and that uh, she has to perform three tasks in order to return home uh, to her father from where she came from. And the film itself is just incredibly creepy, really horrific in some areas in particular the Pelman scene, which I would highly recommend anybody just to search up on YouTube. Uh, just search up Pan's Labyrinth, Pelman, it will come up straight away. You'll find several videos about it. Um, but it's just a really creepy scene overall that's really well filmed. I love the cinematography in this film. Just really creative. Uh, nice double disc set with some cool special features on the second disc. Um, so that's pretty much it for Pan's Labyrinth. Really enjoyed it. Would definitely recommend it.
And next up we have Looper focusing on Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, who is the younger version of the main protagonist. And then we have uh, Bruce Willis, who's playing the older version of the protagonist. And this film overall was quite interesting, focusing on assassination and time travel. Um, but just overall I thought the ending was really empty, so I was kind of disappointed by it, but it was really creative as an idea. Uh, so I might revisit this. Pretty interesting movie. Uh, next up we have a double boxer of uh, the ventriloquist, Jeff Dunham, very talented comedian, and uh, here we have his whole little workshop of random puppets. Ahmed is probably the most well-known one, and uh, Peanut is my personal favourite along with Walter. Um, but just a really nice little double pack, we have Spark of Insanity, which I watched, and uh, the very special Christmas special, which I am yet to watch, but that includes a little CD as well, of uh, some Christmas tracks I assume sang by the various puppets and their characters, but um, yeah, overall looks pretty cool good and uh, Spark of Insanity was very enjoyable so um, I'll have to get the Christmas special out around Christmas since we're only a couple months away so I'll save that for then. Next up we have the Rocky Anthology, which to my shame I have never watched a Rocky film. Uh, so I just bought the first five to see how things go. And uh, honestly they do look really good, I've seen quite a few clips of them on YouTube and obviously I've seen the many things that have inspired uh, many pop culture references etc. So yeah, overall I am actually looking forward to watching these films, I'll probably binge watch all of them within a day or something. Um, but they do look really good and I cannot wait to check them out and I'll have to grab Rocky Balboa um, to finish the set. Off, even though I haven't even got as far as Rocky V yet, which is apparently not very good. But yeah, overall the film franchise does look pretty good, so I'll have to check these out as soon as I can. Uh, next up we have another box set that I haven't watched yet, and that is Caprica Part 1. Uh, I couldn't find Part 2 anywhere, which is really irritating, but I haven't even watched this one yet. Um, but this is a prequel series to Battlestar Galactica, four disc set, and it does look pretty good overall. Um, it's set in the city of Caprica, so I'm very intrigued to see how things go with this series. And uh, next up we have uh, only two series is left. We have uh, The Office Ultimate Package, that's what she said, uh, one to five boxer of the thin editions of The Office DVDs, which I sold my big thick uh, one to nine blue boxer of The Office, just because um, I'd already watched it once, and as soon as I sold it, I regretted it, because I really wanted to re-watch it again, and I just thought when I had sold it, that I probably won't watch it again, but yeah, I had to rebuy the show, and honestly I kind of regret uh, selling the edition that I had, because now apparently newer versions or versions that are brand new, which I got this sealed for, I think it was $6.99 or something, but um, newer versions of uh, the Office DVDs now have squeaky um, voices on uh, Season 1 and Season 2 due to a really bad error uh, with the NTSC conversion to PAL, which is the Region 2 format. Um, so that's really frustrating. So I've bought from America Region 1 copies of Season 1 and 2. Season 3 to 5 are fine. Um, I've tested all of them, but Season 1 and 2 irritate have sped up voices and all the dialogue and the audio overall is just sped up so it's really frustrating uh, so I cannot start this series yet but I've seen it all before I love the US office definitely prefer it to the UK one which is a biased opinion but um, there's a lot more to this show and I really do thoroughly love uh, the lovable characters and the overall uh, comedy in this uh, series so that's the US office 1 to 5 and then we also have uh, series 6 which I grabbed separately and series 7 couldn't find 8 and 9 anywhere uh, so I might just buy those brand new since they're on Amazon for about £8 each anyway, and I've saved quite a lot of money uh, from buying the 1 to 9 box set, which I think is nearly £30, uh, by buying the 1 to 5 for 6 99 I got these for a pound each, um, so that's not too bad. So that's series 6 and 7. And then the final thing that I have to show is Alias Seasons 1 through to Series 3, which I haven't grabbed 4 and 5. I'm only 11 episodes in, but I got these for a pound each, and I love this show. Uh, really great, very interesting spy series. Series and I absolutely love it. Great um, violence overall, and uh, just overall great choreography with the um, fight sequences, etc. So yeah, that's series one. Uh, I'm only on disc four at the moment, but um, these are six disc sets each. Uh, so that's series one. Series two, which is in really crap condition. I had no idea how shite the condition was of this when I bought this from eBay, but all the front is scuffed. This probably came from CEX or something with where the scuff marks are placed from where they have their stickers over the box sets usually, but that's pretty crap. Um, so that's Series 2 and then Series 3, uh, which I got yesterday, which looks very intriguing, and that's another six-disc set, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the um, DVD and Blu-ray update for September 2016. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments 
comments if there's anything in this video you want to see an in-depth review of, or uh, let me know in the comments if you have any opinions on anything I've picked up within the past few weeks, and uh, please subscribe down below for more videos.